everybody on it, Kellogg's Corn Pops! Kellogg's Corn Pops brings you Wild Bill Hickok, transcribed from Hollywood, starring Guy Madison as Wild Bill and Andy Devine as his pal Jingle. Of the long procession of pioneers who traversed our broad continent, pushing the early frontiers ever westward, most were honest, law-abiding, but some were not, and the battle between the good and the bad was often violent. Into this conflict, always on the side of law and order, rode the greatest fighter of them all, scout, sharpshooter, United States Marshal, Wild Bill Hickok. Early one evening in the town of Silver City, two men sat together in the corner shadows of the Cactus Bed Saloon, and they spoke quietly. If you don't mind my saying so, boss, you're looking mighty pleased with yourself. Why shouldn't I be, Stacy? I'm going to be a rich man. I've got a perfect setup. Yeah, it's perfect, all right. You grub stake some prospectors, they sign a contract with you, and when they strike it rich, you cut in for a third of their claim. And then when one of the men I grub stake, like Careful Smith, for instance, hits a rich load, the next thing you know, he meets up with an accident and dies. And the whole mine is yours after you've seen to it that he had that accident. Shut up. Stacy, I don't ever want to hear you say I had anything to do with Smith's death. I'm sorry, boss. Anyway, that ain't why I asked you here to talk about it. It's, it's about old Jim Harris. He's got me worried. I got a feeling he thinks the cave in the trap Smith wasn't what we say it was. He don't know nothing for sure, does he? I don't know. But he's done something I don't like. He's in for Wild Bill Hickok. Hickok? Seems Wild Bill's a friend of his or something. Are you sure he sent for him? I'm sure. Well, I don't like that, boss. I don't like no U.S. Marshal around, especially Hickok. Relax, Stacy. Hickok doesn't know anything, and Jim Harris isn't going to tell him anything either. It's exactly what I called you here about. It would please me a good deal if old Jim Harris suddenly developed a case of lockjaw. Permanent lockjaw. Oh, boy. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, why don't we bed down here, Bill? We've been going all day without a rest. Well, maybe we better. It's getting kind of dark anyway. Whoa, boy. Whoa. Doggone, I was beginning to think we'd never stop. It's just that I'm in such a hurry to get to Jim Harris. I didn't like the sound of his letter at all. What's that? The Winchester. Come on. Up, boy. Up. Over that way. Bill, there's a man laying by those rocks. Whoa, whoa, boy. Whoa. Well, who is it, Bill? Let me just bend down and see. It's Jim Harris, Jingles. Oh, Bill. Bill, is, is that you? It's me, old-timer. Oh, thank heaven you've come, Bill. Thank heaven. I'll take it easy, old-timer. We'll get you to a dock. Oh, it's too late for that, son. That bullet had my name on it, all right. Oh, now, don't talk that way, Mr. Harris. Why? Well, it ain't much time. There's trouble, Bill. Trouble in Silver City. Careful, Smith. It wasn't an accident. Oh. Jim. Jim. Oh, he's dead, Bill. Murdered, Jingles. The killer was hiding behind those boulders waiting for Harris to step into that clearing. A bushwhacker lower than a rattlesnake. Come on, Jingles. We'll tell the sheriff in Silver City. Then we're going hunting for a murder. I don't savvy. I don't savvy it one bit. Who'd want to kill old Jim Harris, Marshal? That's what we aim to find out, Sheriff. But he was nothing but a poor, harmless prospector. As far as I know, he couldn't have an enemy in the world. He knew too much, Sheriff. He knew that Careful's death was no accident. Hold on. Are you saying Smith's death was murder, too? He sure as blazes is. You've got some ring-tailed coyote running around loose, and he's struck twice already. Well, I, I can't agree with you, Marshal. Careful Smith's death was an accident. I investigated the thing myself. Mine cave in. The walls of his mind just gave way, trapped him inside, and he suffocated. Sheriff, I just heard what happened to Jim Harris. Came over as quick as I could to see if I could be of any help. Well, I'm glad you did, Adam. Mr. Cobb, this is Marshal Bill Hickok and his sidekick, Jingles. Uh, Mr. Cobb's got a law office up the street. Howdy. 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 
Certainly glad you're here, Marshal. We don't like no killers around these parts. I don't like killers around any parts, Mr. Cobb. He sure don't. And if more mavericks would take that to heart, there'd be a lot less trouble for all concerned. Well, we don't usually have no trouble in Silver City. The sheriff keeps things orderly. Do you have any idea, Mr. Cobb, who'd want to kill Jim Harris? No, can't think of anyone. That's what I told the marshal, Adam. But he's got some notion. Now, wait a minute. Seems to me Jim Harris had a big argument with another prospector named Sourdough about something or other. Doggone, I remember that. The fur was really flying twixt those two. There's a lot of difference between an argument and a murder. Well, that's so. But this Sourdough fellow's a fiery hombre. Well, Bill, I guess we ought to have a little talk with Sourdough. Yeah. Hey, look out! Hey, somebody threw a knife at us, Jingles. Look, <laughs> it's sunk in that post. Yeah, there's a note attached to it. Yeah. Well, just let me get a look at it. Uh, what's it say, huh? Marshal Hickok. If you know what's good for you, you'll turn around and ride right out of Silver City. Huh. Or you'll get the same treatment I give Jim Harris. Sign the bushwhack. Ah, real two-gun excitement, eh, partners? Got old Panhandle Jim all keyed up. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, I guess two-gun westerns sort of just fit in with a two-way cereal. Did I say two-way cereal? I sure did. Kellogg's Corn Pops. Come on, sidle up close here and I'll tell you about them. You can eat Kellogg's Corn Pops two ways. One way is right out of the box like I'm eating them now. Yes, sir, they're a real tasty snack with the sweetening already on them. Now, the other way to eat Corn Pops is out of the bowl with milk. But remember what I said about the sweetening. Don't go pouring a lot of sugar on them. They're already sweetened for you. Tasty, puffed-up hearts of corn all ready to go. And your ma's going to let you eat all the corn pops you want, because they're good for you. So if you aren't already settled back enjoying Kellogg's corn pops right now, you better hit the trail for the store tomorrow and get a load of them. You'll need plenty, because the whole family's going to be getting into them and gobbling them all up. Now, listen to this little saying. Kids love pops. Moms love pops. And Pops love Pops. <laughs> you said it. Well, right now, uh, let's get back to Wild Bill Hickok. Wild Bill Hickok and his pal Jingles are riding toward Careful Smith's mine in hopes of finding some evidence to prove Smith's killing wasn't an accident. Doggone it, Bill. We went all over town looking for that Sardo fella and didn't find hide nor hair of him. Well, that ought to tell us something. Just what, Jingles? Well, it tells me that the man's hiding out. And you only hide out because you're scared of something. You know, I'm getting a theory about this whole thing. The left trail, Jingles. Come on, boy. Uh, I said I got a theory about this whole thing, Bill. I heard you. Well, ain't you going to ask me what it is? Don't have to ask it, Jingles. Reckon you'll tell me anyway. Well, I ain't going to tell you. I ain't going to tell you that I got it figured that Sardo killed Careful Smith over the mine claim and then killed Jim Harris, too, because Harris saw him do it. Does, it. does that sound all right, Bill? Well, I don't know how it sounds, Jingles. You weren't going to tell me anything, remember? Huh? There's the mine. Whoa, boy. Whoa. Come on. Uh, what are we going to do in Careful Smith's mind? Look around. Let's go in. Uh, well, just what do you think we're going to find here, Bill? I don't know. I just want to look the place over. Hmm. Look at these braces, Jingles. Geez, thick as an elephant's leg. Solid, too. Yeah. This mine was built by a careful man, built to stand. Doesn't look to me like these braces would give way of their own accord. No, sir, it sure... Hey, don't know who's that. It's me, Sardo. Uh, where is he, Bill? I don't see him. There he is, Jingles, standing by the entrance to the mine. That's right, Hickok. Now, don't either of you go for leather, because I got you covered. I hear you and that fat friend of yours have been looking for me. <laughs> That's right, Sardo. I've got some questions to ask you. Well, I ain't ready to answer no questions, but I got a few things on my mind. I got you at gunpoint, and you're going to hear me out. Well, then don't go to stop pointing it at me. You're just making well, me... Well, just shut your mouth and listen in. I know you think I killed Jim Harris and Careful Smith. Well, I didn't. I admit I had an argument with Harris. What it's about ain't none of your business. But I didn't kill him. And another thing, 
I didn't throw no knife in the sheriff's door with a note attached. Then who did, Sourdough? Well, maybe I know and maybe I don't. Maybe you'll find out. Or then again, maybe you won't ever find out nothing. He's gone, Bill. Just scooted away like a scared little cottontail. Come on, let's get out of here. Well, what's that? Avalanche. Side of the mountain's coming down. It's going to block the entrance. Well, let's get out of here. Stay here, Jingles. We'll never make it. Oh. Get off your horse. Take your hands off me. Bring him inside, Stacy. He's going into the sheriff. Get your hands off me, I said. I ain't done nothing. What's going on out here? Sardo. What's this all about, Kyle? We caught him red-handed. That's what, Stacy and me. We were riding out by Careful Smith's mine, and we saw Sourdo here start an avalanche of rocks. The trap marshal Hickok and Jingles inside. What? I did no such thing. Don't listen to him, Sheriff, trying to lie his way out. Stacy and me saw him, and we'll testify to it in court. I didn't do nothing, I tell you, Sheriff. Now, you just simmer down a bit and let me get at some facts. Sourdough, you saying you weren't at Careful Smith's mine? Well... I was there, all right. And he knew the marshal and Jingles was inside, too. Of course I knew it was inside. I talked to him, explained things. And then he came out and set off the avalanche to trap the marshal inside. He had a very good reason. Hickok knew that Sourdough killed Smith and bushwhacked Jim Harris. That ain't so. Cop, you're just... You better put him in the lockup, Sheriff, and stop wasting time. We got to get some men out to that mine and see if we can dig out Hickok and his partner before it's too late. You're right, Adam. Come on, Sourdough. I'm putting you in the calaboose for safekeeping. Sheriff, we've been at this for hours. Yeah, and we'll keep going we'll get through. Some of the men are pretty tired, Sheriff. I know that, Cobb. We can't stop now. Men, we got to keep on going. We can't give up hope now. We're almost through. That's right, man. Keep working. We gotta save the marshal and his partner if we possibly can. I sure want to thank you, Cobb, for helping out like this. Think nothing of it, Sheriff. I'm glad to. Hickok's an important man. He came to help us. You darn shame if he loses his life because of it. Yeah, sure would. Hey, Sheriff, we're through. We broke through to the mine. Come on, Adam. All right. All right, you men. Widen the entrance and let's get on inside. See about Hickok and Jingles. There. There, that's it. All right, you men, you wait outside here. Come on, Cobb, let's go inside. Hickok. Wild Bill, you all right? No answer, Sheriff. It's bad. Yeah, yeah, I was afraid of this. They suffocated all right, just like careful Smith. Uh, he must be around here someplace. There's no place for him to go. The entrance was sealed by all those rocks. Uh... Sheriff! Sheriff! Huh? Sheriff! Clint, what are you doing here? I left you back at the jail to guard Sardo. Well, that's what it come about, Sheriff. Something's happened. What's happened? Well, I, I don't rightly know, but... Uh... But what? Come on, man, speak up. Well, there was Sourdo in the lockup like you left him. And, well, I went out to get a drink of water, and when I come back, well... Well, well what, Clem? Well, when I come back, sourdough was gone. Gone? Are you sure, Clem? Sure, I'm sure, Mr. Cobb. Sourdough just disappeared. That's what he done. Well, that doesn't beat all. What's going on, anyway? Hickok, Jingle, sourdough, all of them vanishing into thin air. There's something downright weird about this whole thing. <laughs> Just smell that, Bill. Just breathe in that lovely bacon frying. At last, my stomach's getting the kind of treatment it deserves. Keep the fire low, Jingles. We don't want to be spotted just yet. Sure thing, Bill. Yeah, I sure want to thank you, Bill, for sneaking me out of the calaboose like you done. I figured I was going to be there till they come for me with a rope. Uh, well, Bill's real good at getting innocent folks out of jail and crooks in. <laughs> <laughs> he sure is. Here, now, have some more bacon, Sardo. Oh, thanks, Jingles. Well, I'm mighty glad that someone thinks I'm innocent. But doggone, how did you two ever get out of that mine? I thought you was goners for sure. So did we, Sourdough. Till we started to poke around and found something. Yes, sir, another exit. 
a safety exit that careful Smith dug for himself so that if one entrance caved in, he'd have another way out. You know, I sure am glad he was such a careful man. Well, now, there's something I don't understand. How come careful Smith himself didn't use that other exit to get out instead of suffocating in that mine? Careful Smith couldn't use that other exit because he couldn't walk to it. He was knocked out and he died before he came to. By George, that's it, all right. Doggone it, some coyote knocked him out and then set off the cave in. It all looked like an accident when it was really wasn't. The same coyote killed Jim Harris because he knew too much. We got a pretty good idea who it was. Here, boy. Uh, we moving on so quick? Yeah, that's right. Stump out that fire. Sardo, we got you out of jail because we want your help. Sure thing, Bill. I'm glad to do anything you can. I got to clear myself of this thing once and for all. You got a plan? Yes. Come on. We're still hunting, Jingles. And now's our time to bait that trap for a murder. <laughs> If you could see me right now, you'd see a real happy wrangler. Just finished up a whole handful of corn pops. And lucky you did, because I want to tell you something. It's about these Kellogg's corn pops, a wonderful eating cereal that's already sweetened for you. Now listen close here. Kellogg's corn pops are hearts of corn, all puffed up big and crisp with plenty of tasty sweetening on them. Now, you can eat them the way I'm eating them now, right out of the box by the handful, or in a bowl with milk. But don't go putting any sugar on them. No, sir, because like I just said, they've already got the sweetening right on them. Every single corn pop. All you ranchers who are eating them right now, take a look at the bag inside the box. Well, it's pure aluminum. Keeps Kellogg's corn pops fresh up to ten times longer. And your mom will want to hear this. That bag's wonderful for storing things in the refrigerator. And you just can't beat it for carrying sandwiches in and keeping them fresh as an evening breeze. Now, don't go fussing with one box of corn pops. The way your family's going to go for them, you're liable to miss out on some. Get your mom to load up big. Then out of the box or out of the bowl, you can have all the Kellogg's corn pops you'll want. And you'll want plenty. You know who loves corn pops. Kids love pops. Moms love pops. And pops love pops. Let's hustle on back to the show. And now let's get back to Silver City and find out about Wild Bill Hickok's daring plan to trap the murderers of Careful Smith and Jim Harris. I don't get it, boss. How could Sourdough disappear from the jail like that? I saw the sheriff lock him in. How could Hickok and Jingles disappear from inside that mine? It ain't possible. I'll say it ain't possible. We set that rock avalanche off ourselves. We know they were sealed up inside, and by all rights, they should have suffocated. They should have, but if they did, why didn't we find them? Don't ask me. All I know is that they're dead, and dead men don't just disappear. It's plenty dark in here, boss. Huh? Oh, yeah. Better light the lamp. Sure thing. I'll get a match to the wick here. There's somebody shut the lamp out of my hand! Stacy, let's get out of here. Don't move for that door, either of you. That's Hickok's voice. Where is he? I don't know. I can't see nothing. It's pitch black in here. You don't have to see me now. Just settle down, you two. We're going to have a little talk. In the dark? Your eyes will get accustomed to the darkness soon. Well, I, for one, ain't talking to no dead man. No, don't shoot again, Hickok. That wasn't Bill. That was me, Jingles. And don't break for that door again. Now, we're going to have that talk, all of us. Hickok, I'm going to demand an explanation of this. What's the meaning of breaking into a peaceful man's office and shooting the place up? Oh, well, doggone it, Bill. Cobb's getting brave again. Cobb, there's nothing peaceful or law-abiding about you at all. You and Stacy are killers. You gonna let him stand there saying that, boss? Now stop fuming, Stacy. There ain't nothing you can do about keeping Bill from saying anything he wants, especially since it's the truth. There ain't a word of truth in what he says. Well, my goodness. The man is getting awful brave calling wild Bill Hickok a liar. My goodness. Cobb, you and Stacy killed careful Smith to get his mind. Then you two killed Jim Harris to keep him from telling what he knew. Boss, maybe he... Shut up, Stacy. Hickok, you're just talking. You got no proof. Got the best proof in the world, Cobb. An eyewitness. An eyewitness? Boss, Shut up, I said. That's a bluff, Hickok. Who's your eyewitness? Sourdough. Sourdough? That's right, and he's at the sheriff's office right now, telling the sheriff what he knows, and it'll be enough to send you two to justice. And justice to me sounds like hanging, maybe. 
You ain't scaring us now. Oh, of course not. But you're sweating a little. Boss, I, I don't like this. I don't like these two hombres disappearing like they did and then showing up again. It ain't natural. Just relax, Stacy. Don't you see what this is? Hickok's bluffing. Trying to get one of us to crack. Think anything you like, Cobb. But in a few minutes, Sourdough and the sheriff are going to be coming this way. Running. They're going to be coming for the two of you. Now I know you're bluffing. Sourdough, vamoose jail. He wouldn't be seen near the sheriff. Because the sheriff would toss him right back into the lockup. All right, Cobb. If you feel so safe, we'll just sit back and wait. Stacy and I can wait as long as you can. Can't we, Stacy? Uh, sure we can. Drag out your harmonica, Jingles. Might as well have a little music while we're waiting. Harmonica? Oh, sure thing, Bill. <laughs> Something happy. This way, Sheriff. Hurry. Boss, that's sourdough. And the sheriff's right behind him running this way. Yeah. Guess you can start on the harmonica now, Jingles. I don't know about you, boss, but I got a horse around back and I'm clear now. Stacy's going out the window, Bill. Let him go, Jingles. Hey, go, Stacy, Sheriff. He's making a run for it. Stacy, wait a minute. All right. So we killed Smith and Harris, but you think I'm fool enough to wait around for a hanging? Come down off that horse. Shoot at me, will you? Jumping catfish, Bill. The sheriff picked Stacy right off his horse. He won't be so lucky with me. And there goes Cobb. I'll take him, Jingles. No, you don't. Well, let me go, Hickok. Pop him on, one, Bill. Pop him one right on his good old snoot. Like this, Jingles? Ooh. Yeah, Bill, just like that. And did I do all right, Marshal? You did fine, Sourdough, and thanks. Hickok, Jingles, what is this? All right, Cobb, on your feet. <clears throat> Here's the other one, Sheriff. Cobb and Stacy committed both murders. Figuring that don't make you so smart, Hickok. You wouldn't have got me if you hadn't had an eyewitness. Eyewitness? Who was the eyewitness? Sourdough, of course. Ain't that what he told you? Ain't that why you come running so fast? That ain't why I come running here, Cobb. I come running this way because Sourdough was running this way. And I was chasing him. I was going to put him back into lockup because I thought he committed the murders you done. You were right the first time, Cobb. Hickok bluffed you. <laughs> yes, sir, he bluffed you right into the calaboose. Hey, now's the time for that happy tune on my... Hey, you know, I just remembered something. What's that, Jingles? You got me in an awful spot, Bill. I don't know how to play the harmonica. <laughs> and now, here are the stars of Wild Bill Hickok, Guy Madison and Andy Devine. We're mighty glad you could be with us today, folks. We'll be looking for you next week for sure. Yeah, we sure will. And if there's any trouble to get into, you can bet I'll get into it. <laughs> Meanwhile, Andy and I also hope you'll remember to get Kellogg's Corn Pop. Right. It's the great new cereal with the sweetening already on it. You bet it is. Andy and I think Corn Pops are great. So long. See you next week. <laughs> Yes, sir, be sure to listen next week at the same time on this same station when Kellogg's Corn Pops brings you another exciting story of Wild Bill Hickok starring Guy Madison and Andy Devine in person. Today's cast included Hal Gerard, Barney Phillips, Lou Marcel, Tyler McVeigh, Jess Kirkpatrick, and Jack Moyles. Our director is Paul Pierce. Music by Dick O'Rourke. This is a David Heyer production and was transcribed in Hollywood. This is Charlie Lyon reminding you, kids love pops. Moms love Pops. Pops love Pops. Kellogg's Corn Pops. Oh.